I cannot stop using this phone. I have been using other phones, of course, when I need to review them, but whenever I'm given the chance to actually pick what phone I take with me, it's pretty much always this at the moment. Here are three reasons why that is. Number one, the 6.7 inch display is kind of the crown jewel on this phone because it is just so, so good. The specs on this OLED are top of the range. It has a 120 Hertz refresh rate and it's capable of 1440p resolution. It's also LTPO, which allows it to drop down to as little as one Hertz when it doesn't need to show all that smooth scrolling. And it's 10 bit, which means it can display over 1 billion different colors, resulting in higher color accuracy than most other phones, which usually only use 8-bit still. When I first started using this, my highly trained video editor eyes did notice there was something special about this display, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. It's kind of hard to explain and show you in video, but everything just looks right, if that makes sense. Well, the screen nerds over at DisplayMate proved me right with actual science. They've declared the Oppo X5 Pro as visually indistinguishable from perfect. Big claim. And in their extensive testing, it set 16 performance records for smartphone displays. If you're a big stats and numbers nerd, I highly recommend you go check out DisplayMate's article on this because it does a really good job of showcasing just how well constructed this screen is. It, it really is something special. Actually, so are the cameras. Yeah, just like the display, the main and ultra wide lenses on this are two of the best cameras I've ever seen on a smartphone. The phone is just so good at replicating true to life colors. Some come with a touch of added vibrancy, but I think it's just enough to make the images immediately shareable after taking a snap. Also, everything has this nice softness to it that you don't typically get with other phones. I really, really like the look out of this thing. This is also just really good at low light. Most of these images are taken in very dark situations and it's done a spectacular job of bringing up the true colors and the sharpness of the scene. Like, look at this portrait I took. My face isn't illuminated by anything in the real world. It's completely dark outside. My skin's a little bit smoother than normal, but otherwise it looks like I'm fully lit. That is wild stuff. Similarly, this rabbit I found was sitting in pitch black night, just illuminated by that one street light in the back. Of course, it does kind of fall apart when there's a bit of movement from either yourself or the subject, but if you can keep still, it's just really, really impressive. Video is the same, really impressive stuff, but you can see in really dark footage, the AI from the Maricilicon chip adapts the image as it records. It's a weird look, but the trade-off is you can kind of get away with shooting in almost no light, and I think that's pretty cool. It does have a third lens and that is a 13 megapixel two times telephoto zoom, but it's just not very good. Frankly, digitally zooming in on a 50 megapixel image with the wide looks just as good. So I feel like the long lens is kind of useless on this phone. It's such a big shame because pretty much every other premium phone in this price range have a decent telephoto lens and one that can go further than two times. Maybe next year Oppo. The other two lenses are so good, they kind of make up for the lack of decent telephoto though. If you don't mind being close to your subjects or taking a lot of landscapes, yeah, you'll be happy with these. But of all the key features, there is one thing that absolutely sells this to me. It's the charging and battery. It's just magic. The phone comes with its own charging brick and cable, but it's just not any old charging brick. It's an 80 watt SuperVOOC charger, which essentially allows this to charge from zero to 100% in just over 30 minutes. Pair that with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and you've got a phone that can easily last the whole workday. And you know, if it dies, it's not gonna be much of a hassle to charge up. I was already really happy with this. It basically made me stop charging my phone overnight and just plug it in 20 minutes before I would go anywhere, which is kind of kind of wacky for a phone. Um, you don't normally do that. But then I took it traveling. That absolutely sealed the deal with me because um, yeah, when you're you know at airports or camping, it's actually kind of hard to find power outlets sometimes. But if you have a power outlet in 15 minutes, that's gonna keep you topped up for a, quite a while. And that is actually really, really useful when you're out and about. Okay, there is one trade-off that I should tell you about. Because the tech behind this charger is specific to how the phone is built, it won't supercharge any phones that aren't from the BBK Electronics Company and are compatible with this style of charging. This also can't access SuperVOOC with other brands' chargers. It does still get fast charging, but it is a lot slower than the 80 watt, 30 minute charge that I was talking about. My advice, if you do buy this phone, definitely make sure to hold on to your charger because this is your ticket to those crazy charging speeds. See you 
So you might have noticed there's also another phone sitting here. This is the non-pro Find X5. I would have reviewed this maybe about a month ago. Uh, go check that video out if you haven't already. Um, basically the TLDR is I didn't really like it that much and that's because it feels more like a stripped back version of the Pro rather than a decent phone in its own right. While it's a little smaller, and that could definitely be a good thing for some people, its display is missing a few of the things that make the Pro so great. It also has last year's processor, which is still pretty good mind you, and it is not technically waterproof, which is a huge miss for me. There are a few differences that are less pronounced as well. The Pro does have slightly better cameras with better stabilization and an improved color sensor, but these features really only come into play on edge cases, most notably in low light scenarios. Frankly, most images out of these two phones look very similar. They're both great. The charging and battery on these is also very similar. Both have some of the best charging speeds in the industry, but if you are keen on wireless charging, the Pro can go a bit faster, but again, it's a pretty minor edge case. Basically, I feel like the non-pro Find X5 is priced to compete with phones that kind of just do everything better, whereas once you add all the pro features to this one, this is actually a pretty decent competitor to other phones in that premium price range. It's kind of weird to think about when a lot of the improvements to this are actually pretty minor, but believe me, they do add up. Unfortunately, all those features also add up to a premium price, with the Oppo Find X5 Pro going for around 1800 Australian dollars. That's pretty pricey and just below the S22 Ultra, which while it has its own weird downsides, comes with that cool pen and two decent telephoto lenses rather than one pretty bad one. So yeah, if you can get over the price and don't really care about the telephoto lens, this is just a really, really good phone. It definitely doesn't have any novel gimmicks like some of the other phones that I've reviewed this year, but what it does have is all the features that matter to power users. And it does all of those things really, really well. With a beautiful main screen, some of the fastest charging in the industry, and two very nice main cameras, this phone is just the complete package. I would use it as a daily driver, and honestly, I have. I, I absolutely love this thing. But if you are keen on Oppo and think maybe you could save some cash and don't need all the pro features that are found here, well, I do have my review of the Find X5 non-pro edition. Uh, you can check that out here, and who knows, maybe I can help you save some money. That's what I'm all about here at TechFinder. I'll, uh, I'll see you at that video. Bye.